It's the old bear from the old bear's den of Bigfoot, and I'm back again. And we got a picture of the rhododendrons that my mother and daddy planted here on this on the, here at my home. Um, it was their home, and now it's mine. Anyways, um, this one comes out of out of Alabama also, and I hope you enjoy it. And um, it's. Uh, kind of scary um a gentleman but also kind of funny a gentleman that at the plant that i was at um talked to the other guy from alabama about his coon hunting and he was telling me about it because he recognized me and he went in and got this other guy that had an account that happened to him this past deer season down there in Alabama. Evidently, they they do hunting with hounds down there and chase the deer out and somebody shoots them. You know, they, they harvest deer that way. It's legal in Alabama. It's perfectly legal. There's nothing wrong with it. Anyways, uh, when they did this, they... Running and it was late season down there for their deer hunt and it was one of the last last weekends of their deer hunting and the gentleman was on a deer drive and they had the hounds and the hounds were chasing a deer at least they thought that they were chasing a deer and he posted himself in a clear cut. Now, the clear cut is a very big area where they've cut all the trees. And there's some of the tops still there. And there's tall grass in there. And, and you know how they look. Uh, definitely not like what you're looking at. But anyway, he posts himself up there. And it's his stand uh, that he's, you know, that he goes to. And everybody knows he's going to be there. He gets there, gets out, walks. 300 feet out into the clear cut, uh, about 300 feet from his truck. And at that point, he is there and he's hearing the dogs get closer. And about this time, he sees brush moving. And he sees something brown in color go running across a small opening through a couple, a little bit of the uh, treetops and the thick briars and all that that are there. And at that point, he's thinking deer. Well, he's wrong. Finally, they get down in front of him, probably... 50 yards and there's an opening that these things have to go across. So he's getting prepared to shoot a deer when it steps out. Well, when it steps out, it's most assuredly not a deer. Granted, it's down on all four of its limbs, two feet and running on two hands. And when it steps out, it stops automatically, stands straight up, and looks right at him. This thing stands up. It looks to be 
the 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 face of it he said had human like features high cheekbones the eyes were you know further apart than a human it had a long um slender par upper part of its nose and the uh, the bottom part of its nose kind of flattened out somewhat but not much and after this one stepped out, he hears, uh, uh, and another one steps out, and this one is not like the other one. This one is clearly a female. It's hair covered. It looks like the first one, and but it has breasts, and it's most assuredly a female. So, he's standing there looking at two Bigfoot, one big one, about nine feet, and the other one's about six and a half, seven foot tall. This is what he guessed maybe them to be. And this female starts walking towards him. Now, this gentleman is... His skin color is, you know, he's he's a black gentleman. And he's in his middle 30s. And he's looking at these things and he's got his gun kind of held by both hands across his chest because he was going to make sure that it was a white-tailed deer that he was going to shoot. And in the process... He's he's not moving. It kind of scares him to the point where he's not moving anymore. And once he sees these two creatures and that female starts towards him, it starts kind of doing a undulation or a dance of some type. I, I guess if you were a Bigfoot, it would be... Well, I don't know how to say this, but kind of erotic, possibly. And this female is definitely centered and focused upon him. And it comes up within about 30 to 40 feet away from him and is standing there looking at him and starts cooing. Yes, I said cooing. And he is standing there, and he's looking at the female, and then he looks up for the male, and the male has ran off somewhere, doesn't know where she went. And there's a little bit of a bank, maybe a five or six foot tall bank that he's standing on top of, so that he could see down into, and into the clear cut real good. Well, at that point, he decides it's time to leave, and he starts backing away. Well, when he backs up, he trips over some brush or something. He tangled his feet up and tripped and fell backwards. Well, that female jumps that small bank and lands right where he was standing and is looking down at him and making cooing sounds at him still. And he is starting to get worried as to her intentions. And while he's laying there, he still has his rifle in his right arm because when he fell, he tried to catch himself with his left arm. And he has the gun and he's left. He flips the safety off and pulls the trigger. Well, this female takes off running through the brush towards the tree line on the other side of the right of way. He thinks everything is over. He scrambles up on his two feet and runs to his truck. He gets to his truck and looks 
hops in the truck, starts it, and looks through his windshield. Now, it's been raining off and on, and he turns the wipers on. And when he looks through the windshield, there is a very large male, a very large female, around the eight and a half foot tall size, looking like Patty. Well, (laughs) then there's a very large white male Bigfoot standing there like it may have been Grandpa. And the other Bigfoot that he saw there with that female is standing there and the same female is standing in the road. They start walking towards him. He throws it in reverse, guns it, slams the truck into the bank, and when he did that, he got stuck. Evidently, he went across a couple of ruts that were deep and stuck his truck. So now he's trying to get his truck unstuck, and he's looking out the passenger window, trying and watching these Bigfoot get closer and closer and closer. Finally, the three males stop. The big female and the small female continue towards him. And at that point, he knows he's stuck. He can't get the truck out. So he goes to get out of the truck and grabs his rifle. And by the time that he steps out of the truck... He no longer sees the two females. Well, when he looks towards the back of his truck, the big female's coming around the back, and he looks to the front, and the little female is coming around the front of the truck. Well, the big female, who is clearly older, and 99% chance that it's the mother of the two Bigfoot that he saw first, walks up and he releases his hold on his rifle and this big female is standing there looking at him from the back of his truck and he starts talking to her in English. And while he's talking to her in English, he's trying to explain, I don't want nothing to do with your daughter. Leave me alone. I didn't do anything. I didn't start this. And the reason the gun went off is because I was scared. And he's trying to explain all the things that was on. And evidently the female could understand him somewhat. And by his hand gestures and him kind of cowering back towards the door of the truck. And... The radio crackles in his truck. Now, he has a CB radio in his truck, and his hunting buddies are hollering at him, Hey, uh, what happened with the dogs? They came back towards us. Uh, did they turn deer towards us? What well, you know, they're asking a bunch of questions. And he dips into the truck and grabs the radio and says, Okay, everybody needs to get here. I've got trouble. I need help. I'm stuck. I can't get out of here. These things are going to kill me. And very shortly, you can. he said, I could hear my buddies coming up that muddy road, and they were flat out flying to get up there. They thought something was going to kill me, uh, didn't know what it was, didn't care. Well, all of them start coming down the road, and they get to where they can see these creatures standing around his truck. And at that point, they start shooting. Well, all the Bigfoot scatter. Everybody runs off. And they get up there. They can't get his truck out. They try to pull it out. They couldn't get him out. They just put him in his truck. They'll come back the next day because the next day is supposed to be dry. Uh, no rain, and they'll they'll get him out then. 
Well, they get him out of there, get him home, and they go back and pick him up the next day. A couple of his buddies with big four-wheel drives go out there, and they're going to pull his truck out. Well, when they get out there, the truck ain't sitting upright. The truck is sitting on its side. So finally, they turn the truck over onto all four wheels. They get him unstuck. Takes him a couple hours, come alongs, winches, everything like that that you had to use. And once they got everything straightened out, one of the guys rode back with him. They couldn't get the driver's door open because the driver's door was pushed into the the truck. Um, and they had locked the truck up and, you know, his buddies are giving him a hard time and then they start finding footprints in the muddy road and his story is starting to take hold and they're like, well, we're getting out of here and they leave. They got him out, got him home and they went out the next weekend in the same area and done another deer drive. And as soon as he got there, he had his younger cousin with him as soon as they get out of the truck they hear cooing sounds he jumps back in the truck tells his buddies we're changing position and things are still here we're leaving they get in the truck and drive and get out of there they don't even hunt they he drove home so he has been out there a couple of times since deer season. And every time he goes out there in that area, he hears cooing sounds. Now, he's happily married. And I think this female has a thing for him. She finds him attractive. He's a guy. I don't know. I don't know how women think. I don't know how they act. But... This female finds him attractive, and he's had his wife out there, and when he's had his, the one time he took his wife out there since this, um, there were growls, but no cooing. So they have decided they're leaving that area completely alone this deer season, and he's not going back out there for any reason whatsoever. And it usually is a very productive area for them when they deer hunt because there's quite a few deer in that area. And they're not going to hunt that anymore. So they have stopped him from hunting and have caused him issues. And his wife, in no uncertain terms, said, you can't have a girlfriend with hair all over her, so don't even think about going out there. And that's from his wife. I hope you enjoy this. Leave comments, thumbs up, whatever you would like to do. And I hope all of you are blessed and stay safe out there. Have a good one.